Well, good evening, Christian Family Church. Good evening to all of you watching us online. Great to be in church with you this evening. Amen. Well, I want to speak to the men first. Where are all the men? There we go. All the men online, we're watching you too. We want to remind you to come and join us on Friday night for the Manhood Conference, which is obviously taking place right here. And so the tickets are still available. You can purchase them at Quicket or go out into the Fellowship Mall afterwards and purchase them there. Come and join us. It's going to be a great, great evening. Now, to guys, this is an outdoor event. We've planned for it to be outdoors, some great activities for that evening. And so if you have bought a ticket and are buying a ticket, Because it's an outdoor event, if it is raining next Friday, then you must still be there. No, just kidding. If it's raining next week, Friday, then we're going to just postpone it by one more week. So plan that in your diaries. So if there is rain and it's raining Friday night, we'll just move it on one week. But look out on our social media platforms. We'll probably post something there just to confirm that. So that's for all the men. And then some good news from Apostle Theo. He is going to be teaching on the Christmas Day service. Isn't that awesome? He's going to be doing the Christmas Day message. He wanted us to share that with you. He says he's got a real encouraging and warm Christmas message for you. So we are looking forward to that. This is going to be obviously the first time that he'll be ministering since his heart attack. And he's doing good. He's doing good. Praise the Lord. So I'm excited about that. And I'm sure you are as well. Amen. Well, family, won't you stand with me? Let's open in prayer. We're going to get into the Word. There, you at home as well. Why don't you stand up? Just push that couch aside and we're going to open in prayer. And while you are standing, I want to take this opportunity as always and thank Apostle Theo and Dr. Bev for the great privilege it is to be able to share the Word of God with you right here at Christian Family Church. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as always, we want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We always remind ourselves that without you, we can do nothing. So we hand this service over to you. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. Come and have your way. Bring life to every hearer. And in advance, we want to thank you for the lives that will be touched and changed as a result of your word. And we honor you for that this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you may be seated, family. Grab your Bibles. Grab your church app. You can go to the notes there. I'll be covering a few scriptures tonight and and they all are in the app. So it'll be easier for you just to fill in your notes as you go along there as well. But I believe her Bible is first price. If you have one, that is first price. Well, family, this morning I was teaching a message on Thanksgiving because we've been celebrating a month of Thanksgiving and I covered different things in that message. And this is really a slight continuation, although it's a separate message, but it's a slight continuation. And I titled the message this morning, Thanksgiving. And this evening, it is still Thanksgiving with a subtitle of the 12 benefits of giving thanks to God. So we're going to look at that this evening. But the theme scripture that I shared this morning was found in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. And this is what it says. It says, in everything, Give thanks, this is the will of God. You see, family, God wants us to be grateful and thankful people, amen? I mentioned this this morning, let me repeat it again to those of you that perhaps weren't here, is that giving thanks infuses joy and resilience into our daily lives. And so when we are people that are grateful and thankful and have a real positive attitude, it really changes each and every day, amen? Amen? Get up, getting up in the morning, thanking God for His goodness, really just puts a great spin on your day, sets you off in a positive direction. And God wants us to be a people like that. Why? Because without gratitude, our faith becomes just a hollow religious practice. And we never want that to be the case. We want to be thanking God for His goodness. Family, there is always something to be grateful for. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're going through, No matter what you will be going through, there's always something to be grateful for. I mean, you are here today. You can thank God that you could get in here all by yourself. That somebody didn't have to carry you in, push you in. That you weren't woken up this morning in hospital for your next bit of medication. You can praise God for that, amen? We can praise God that He's just given us a brand new day to live in. There's much to be grateful for. And so this evening... We're going to look at these 12 benefits of giving thanks to God. So are you ready? In no particular order, we're going to start off with the first one on my list. And that is this, that gratitude glorifies God. Gratitude glorifies God. I mean, that alone 
is reason enough to give thanks to God. You see, when I'm grateful, I'm telling others about the goodness of God. It brings glory to His name. Amen? And we need to know that. You see, our gratitude glorifies God as we exalt not the gifts, but the giver. We exalt the giver. When I'm sharing a testimony and I'm telling people of the goodness of God and I'm thanking God for His goodness, it's really giving glory to God. It has nothing to do with what I've received, but the one who's made it possible. And that's what it does. It brings glory to God. Gratitude helps us realize all we have comes not because of us, but because of God. That's what it does. And that's why I love what it says in 2 Corinthians 4.15. It says this, all of these things are for your benefit. And as God's grace brings more and more people to Christ, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Amen? So always be a people that are grateful and that are sharing God's goodness because it honors Him and that's the most important thing. The second thing is that gratitude helps us see God. How's that possible? How can gratitude help us see God? Well, family, gratitude opens our spiritual eyes. There's a beautiful cycle in giving God thanks. The more we thank Him, the more we see Him working in us and around us. I mean, the fact that you can get up and say, Father, thank you that the sun is shining today. You see God in that. The more you get to just thank God for the little things around you, for the fact that you can have fresh breath, a fresh breath of air to take, you can see God in that. You can see God when you are grateful. That's what that means. We express that. We express our gratitude. We see Him in it. Gratitude helps us to sense God's presence, His personal care, and His perfect timing. Isn't that so? Haven't you sometimes just wondered when, when something's happened, and you said, gee, man, that was just God's timing. If it wasn't for that, I could just see God's hand in that. And you sense God more when you have a person that's grateful. In James chapter 1 from verse 16, it says this, Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. All good things come from God, amen? All good things. The third thing is that gratitude puts us directly in God's will. Isn't that amazing? Gratitude puts us directly in God's will. You see, we often make out God's will to be something big or some mystical plan when sometimes it's simply just obedience. It's simply just obedience. You see, a part of His will is for us to be thankful. Not just on the days when it's good, but also when we are going through challenges. And that's why our opening verse says this. Give thanks to God. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances. Why? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So if you want to be in God's will, just be a grateful person. Giving thanks. Then you're in God's will by doing that simple step. The fourth thing is this, that gratitude brings peace. Gratitude brings peace to you and I. You see, we, are, we should be counting our blessings each and every day. Some people, their life is so full of worries that at night to try and go to sleep, they count sheep. <laughs> count sheep to try and fall asleep because there's so many challenges in their life. But gratitude helps us to see that God's hand is all over our circumstances. And God tells us when we give Him thanks, he gives us supernatural peace. We can read that in Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6. It says this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Verse 7. If you do this, if you are a person who's thankful, if you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than a human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You see, family, when we pray and take things to God and we thank Him for what He's about to do, we are at peace because we know He's faithful. He's going to do it. Amen. That's why gratitude brings peace. Because I'm thanking God knowing He's not going to let me down. I can relax. God has got this. Amen. 
The fifth thing is that gratitude draws us to God. Having a grateful heart draws us to God. You see, gratitude for the, uh, uh, sorry, gratitude for the magnitude of God's undeserved kindness draws us to Him. We see this in the story of the 10 lepers. You all heard of the story where Jesus was walking by and there were 10 lepers and all 10 cried out to Jesus to be healed. Isn't that right? All of them cried out to Jesus. And Jesus, after praying for them, said this, go show yourselves to the priest, Jesus commanded. And as they went, they were healed. Now that's an amazing thing. He prayed for them as they went off in faith, they were healed. Can you imagine what happened? Fingers growing back. Limbs growing back, ulcers disappearing, their sensation coming back into their hands and feet. Can you imagine that happening? It was an amazing experience. And I'm definitely sure that all of them were happy about what took place. But only one was thankful. Only one was thankful. Only one came back to Jesus and fell at his feet and thanked him. And that's why gratitude draws us back to the Lord. In Luke 17 verse 7 it says this, Jesus asked, Were not 10 men who were healed? Where are the other nine? Is this stranger from another country the only one who turned back to give thanks to God? Then Jesus said to him, get up and go your way. Your trust in God has healed you. My gratitude, your gratitude draws me back to God. It brings me to the place where I thank him for what he's done in my life. It helps me to bring him back into my memory for the wonderful things he's done. Gratitude draws us back to the Lord. The sixth benefit is that gratitude brings contentment. When you are grateful and thankful, you are content. It's said that gratitude makes what we have enough. Let me say that again. Gratitude makes what we have enough. If we aren't grateful for what God has given us, getting more won't satisfy us either. Isn't that true? If we're not grateful for what you already have, having more won't change that. You'll just want more. We've got to be grateful for the things that we have. Being thankful is the key to being content. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verse 6, it says this, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. When we are grateful people, we are happy with what we have. Amen. We are just content with life. And if you are a grateful person, I can promise you, God will continually meet your every need. Because there's no greed in your heart. And God will want to bless you so that you can continue to be a blessing. Amen. The seventh one is this. That gratitude deepens your faith. It does not Give you faith. We know that faith comes by the word, right? We understand that. But it deepens your faith. How is that possible? Well, keeping a record of God's past faithfulness is a faith boost when we face new difficulties. If I have a a journal or a book of all the good things he's done for me, what then do I see? That God has a great track record. If If he's been good to me in the past, he'll be good to me in my present, and he'll be good to me in my future. That's what it does. It deepens my faith. You see, God's record is 100%. He never fails you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can know that. And that's why God commanded Israel to remember his good deeds. In Psalm 136 verse 1, it says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And if you know that, if you're a person that's experienced that, and you have a history of his faithfulness, no matter what challenge comes, you can look back saying, if he was good then, he'll be good going forward. Amen? That's our God. The eighth thing is that gratitude leads to joy. It really does. Just think of that. That's obvious. Gratitude leads to joy. You see, the overflow of gratitude really is joy. Realizing God's abundant goodness, even in the hard times, is a gateway for joy. In Psalm 126, it shows this so clearly. As the Hebrew exiles sang their their thanks to God for bringing them back into Israel. And this is what Psalm 126 from verse 1 says. It says this. When the Lord brought us back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Isn't that awesome? 
It does. Gratitude just leads to joy. When we just thank God for the goodness in our life, our hearts fill with joy because we know God is ever true and constant. The ninth one is that gratitude, listen to this one, resists Satan's lies. Gratitude resists Satan's lies. You see, you know that Satan can be a little bit cunning, right? He can be a little bit cunning and he whispers that God isn't good and that he's withholding good from us. That's what he always tries to tell us, that God's not good. And he, he tried these schemes right from the Garden of Eden when he questioned Eve and said, didn't God really say, you may not eat from any tree in the garden? Eve responded, only the tree of good and evil is off limits. Then Satan suggested that God was keeping something from them. Surely you can have everything. Why not that one? You see? You will not surely die, Satan said, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and even, evil. You see, family, in a garden that was perfect, that produced abundance without work and weeding, where every single plant except one had been given to Adam and Eve, Satan focused on the one. He focused on the one. You see, true gratitude for God and the abundance he gives protects us from the uh, 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 enemy's lies. That's what it protects us from. Because you can have so much and you can say, but you don't have that. Uh, but, well, but why can others have that and you can't have that? He always tries to focus, uh, get you to focus on the things that you don't have so that we can sometimes believe the lie that God is holding back. God is not holding back anything from anybody, Amen. And the devil wants to lie to us. So gratitude helps us to resist those lies. Psalm 48, 11 says this, no good thing, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. God wants you blessed, family. He wants you healthy, happy, full of joy. That's his desire, amen. Didn't Jesus say in the book of uh, uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, the thief only comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God wants you to have a full life. The devil is the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The tenth one is that gratitude guards against envy. We spoke quite a bit about that this morning, but gratitude guards against envy. Envy simply makes us want what someone else has. Gratitude makes us realize God has given us far more than we deserve. That's what gratitude does. When we count our blessings, we realize how much we actually have. Gratitude shows us that we have that. Because there's enough for everyone, family, we can cheer rather than compare. A heart wholly grateful has no room for envy. A heart that is truly grateful has no room for envy. And that's why Psalm 138 verse 1 says this, Lord, with all my heart, I thank you. With all my heart, I thank you. The 11th one is this, gratitude helps us live in the present. It helps us live in the present so that we stop comparing. You see, Jim Elliot said these famous words. He says, wherever you are, be there. Wherever you are, be there. Too many people say, oh, remember when? 1940 something, those days were wonderful. <laughs> Always wanna live somewhere else. We need to be in the present. I know that can be difficult sometimes when you have challenges in life, Gratitude helps. Gratitude opens our eyes to the simple beauty, listen to this, of ordinary days. Simple beauty of ordinary days. It lets us see this day and this moment as gifts and, not ta and take in the abundant right now. You see, when we get up in the morning and just thank Him for today, get up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord. You've given me another opportunity to live my life. We live in the presence. We're grateful for what we have now. In Ecclesiastes 7 verse 10, it says, don't always be asking, where are the good old days? Wise folks don't ask questions like that. We're content with today. We're content with the blessings of today. Every day will bring you new blessings. Amen? And the 12th one is this. Gratitude is a testimony. That's what it is. Gratitude is a testimony. When we thank God openly and acknowledge what he's done for us, we proclaim a personal, caring God to the world around us. We show that contentment and peace don't come from what we have, 
but who we know. Throughout who we know. You know, in Psalm 1, let me first read the Psalm, then I'll tell you. In Psalm 105, verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. You know, the, 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 the uh, Jewish people were commanded by God to tell the next generation of his goodness. Tell them what God has done. Tell them how we were uh, released from captivity. Tell them how God provided for us when we came through the desert. Tell them how he opened the Red Sea. Why? They were teaching their next generation that God is a good God. But how can you share that if you're not grateful? They were grateful. They had much to be grateful for. Tell your children. Tell those in your household the good things he's done for you. Set them up for their life for success, knowing that they serve a God who's faithful and that he'll always meet your every need. And so family, tonight, we are going to express our gratitude. Are you ready for that? We're going to take a moment to express our gratitude. We are not going to come now and ask God for anything. We are going to just spend a moment, as the band starts making their way up, we're going to spend a moment and worship our God and thank him for his goodness. He's been good to us. No matter what you face, family, he's been good to you. And we want to do that. And, and so I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind standing with me. I want to read Psalm 100 to you. I'm going to read it in two translations. And then straight after the second translation, the band is going to lead us in a song. And then I'll come back again. But listen to Psalm 100. I first want to read it to you out of the New King James. And this is what it says. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse four says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Now listen to it in this translation, and then the band's going to lead us. Are you ready? Listen to this one. The message translation says that this, the same verse this way. It says, on your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this. God is God and God. He, ha he made us. We did not make Him. We're His people. Well-tended sheep. Look at this one. Enter with the password. Thank you. I love that. Enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home. Take talking praise. Thanking Him. Worship Him. Verse 5. Why? For God is sheer beauty. All generous in love. Loyal always. And forever, amen.
You're good to me. Say thank you, Father. There's none like you. I worship you, my King. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wasn't that awesome? Just to worship God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Family, I want to encourage you. Let that be part of your daily life. Just thanking God and worshiping Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Won't you take your seats? And as you do that, I want to give people here an opportunity this evening to make Jesus Lord of their life. That they can truly experience gratitude. And so this evening, friend, if you're sitting here this evening or you're watching online and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, I want to pray a prayer for you. I'm going to ask everybody just to bow their heads and close their eyes at this time. And friend, the Word of God says in Romans that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's as simple as that because Jesus has paid the price. So I'm going to give you an opportunity this evening to come to know Him as your Lord and Savior. Now, friend, I'm not embarrassing you. I'm not asking you to come out to me. I'm not going down to you if you're here in person. But simply in a moment, when I count to three, if you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, just raise your hand when I count to three and I'll pray for you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed and you and your homes can do the same. My second invitation is to anybody here this evening or watching If you once knew the Lord and and you know that your relationship with Him has grown cold, you're not serving Him the way that you used to, Frank, come back home today. Give me the privilege of including you in that prayer. And you can know for sure that you'll once again be in a right relationship with God. And then my third and final invitation is to anybody that has this question in their heart. You might be wondering, what would happen to me when I breathe my last? Will I make it to heaven or will I fall into the flames of hell friend if you'll allow me to pray with you tonight you can know for sure that heaven will be your home so at the count of three you want to come to jesus for the first time you want to come back to him or know for sure that heaven is your home won't you raise your hand now one two three and i'll pray for you god bless you god bless you god bless you sir good decision well done there god bless you good decision well done i see many hands going up great decision there well done young man great decision If you're at home watching online, you can raise your hand too. I want to pray for you. It's so wonderful to see so many hands going up. Now, friend, I'm going to invite everybody here tonight to pray this prayer with you, but especially those that have raised their hands. Let's all say this prayer together. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight just as I am. Please forgive me for every sin. I do believe Jesus is Lord and He was raised from the dead. I choose tonight to forgive every person who has hurt me or offended me. And I thank you, Father, that I am now part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome to the family of God. What an awesome decision you've made tonight. Heaven's rejoicing. We are rejoicing and we are truly grateful for the decision that you've made this evening. Now, friends, for those of you in person with us, I would like to ask you if you'd be willing to take a next step and just slip out into the aisle and go with the people in the aisle. We just want to give you something. We want to give you something tonight. They'll just spend a short moment with you. Be free to come back out. If you feel more comfortable, you can just text us or SMS us the word SAVED to 4991. And we'll get in contact with you, specifically those of you at home. For those of you in person, won't you go with somebody here this evening? We just want to give you something tonight and thank you for the decision you've made. And we will get in contact with you for all of those that uh, obviously uh, send us that SMS. And we are grateful for that. You can also go onto our website, fill out the contact card and watch the Next Steps videos. That'll help you with that as well. Let's give them another warm welcome to the family of God. Proud of you, proud of you. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. Well, I hope you've been encouraged this evening by the Word of God. I want to remind you to join us every morning at 8 a.m. for prayer. That will be taking place Monday through to Saturday. We love praying with you. And also, if you're here for the first time, come and join us at our Connection Center. We just want to meet with you and say hi and thank you for spending the service with us. And then remember that our Growth Track Step 1 starts on the 6th of December. So you can log on if you want to do that online and register. Or you can come in person after the service on the 6th. And come and join us for step number one of Growth Track. Well, family, 
I'm going to ask you to stand as we vacate and obviously get, uh, get ready to clean out the building. Our band is going to lead you with an excellent song. So thank you guys. <laughs> 